Hey guys, so today I'm servicing a CU GTR215. I'm just going to run through a few things on how to properly extract the oil, um, how to change the plugs and how to put oil back in it properly. So um, this will be the same across the board with all CU motors as they all pretty much run the three cylinder ro Rotax motor. Um, Alright, so let's get started. Firstly, some things you're going to need. Um, you're going to need at least five litres of marine semi-synthetic four-stroke 10W40 oil. You're going to need a genuine c oil filter with the correct O-rings, and you're also going to need spark plugs. Now these are NGK DCPR8E, that's what we use. Next thing you're going to want to do is pop your hose on the back of your ski, just like that. Now don't turn the water on until you've started it. What we're going to do is we're going to warm up the oil. We're just going to make it a little bit easier to suck it out. And you want to get the oil out of the pan all through the motor. So pretty much what you want to do is you want to come along, you want to hit start, then turn the water on. We want to run it for no longer than five minutes on a hose. Um, we're going to rev it up to about 4,000 RPM and then we're going to kill it while it's at 4,000 RPM and that'll lift the oil up. Then turn your water on. So the ski's been on the hose now for about five minutes, which means the oil's nice and thin. It should be warmed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold it at um, 4,000 RPM, and we're going to kill the motor while it's at that RPM. So, you firstly, you want to make sure you turn your water off. And then that should pretty much make the oil nice and thin, lift it up out, and um, should be ready to suck out. So the next step is remove the dipstick, remove the oil cap, you want to grab your suction tube, and you just want to pop it right down the dipstick as far as you can, just till it bottoms out, and then you want to pull it back just a fraction. Alright, so that's in there now. Right, so now we connect the other side of the pump to this and we just start removing the oil. You can buy cheaper extraction kits from auto parts stores. So as you can see, it's coming up through that tube. You're gonna be able to get every drop out. Um, unfortunately, there's no bung or anything on a jet ski, so you've just gotta be patient and suck out as much as you can. It does pay to do regular oil changes so that oil just stays fresh. So you can hear that that's sucking air now, which means that it's pretty much sucked out most of it. Pull this out. Just make sure it doesn't leak anywhere. So what we're going to do, we're going to try and get a, just a little bit more oil. We're going to hold it wide open throttle, which means that the ski won't actually start up. And we're just going to crank it over a few times and we're just going to make that oil just flow through the motor a little bit more and just try and get as much out as we can. So like I said, just wide open throttle, should, shouldn't start. As you can see, it's sucking out a fair bit more now. We want to repeat that process about five times and just get as much out as we can. Just pull that back a fraction. It's just a fraction every time, but every little bit helps. So the next step is to remove the oil filter. Um, you do need an E10 socket to correctly do it, but we just use a, a double hex 8 mil socket. It actually fits on there quite nicely. Make sure you're in reverse. It's just Crack the top of that, be sure not to strip it. Gently prise underneath. So that's popped out now. The next step is to remove the filter from the lid just by pulling down. Alright, so while you've got the filter off, just give everything a nice rub down. 
what you can notice here is there's two o-rings on the lid now what you want to do is you want to make sure that that o-ring isn't broken i replace it every time anyway so we want to remove those two o-rings just using a sharp pick get in behind it prise it off to the bottom now the, the large one does go on the bottom now reinstalling small one onto the top what i like to do is just run the edge of the pick right around it just to make sure it's got no twists in it pop him on get the pick under it now we just want to press the new oil filter up you'll feel them go up nice and snug dip your finger in just so the o-ring doesn't bind up when you screw it in it's always a good idea just gently line it up just make sure that nothing's cross-threading pop her in like that and just tighten it up new oil filters in it's time to put some oil on it we've removed our oil cap we've got a funnel here we're just going to put in two litres of oil see what it comes up to when you're filling up with these bottles you always tilt them on its side and it'll stop it from glugging so that's about a litre and a half I'm going to wait for that oil to drain in I got it we're sitting on just about under half so I'm, I'm just going to you want it halfway between the two folds so I'm just going to pop a little bit more in then we'll start it up I throw a level across the two plugs here make sure that it's level um, let engine running at idle for at least 30 seconds stop engine and wait at least 30 seconds check oil level using the dipstick so we'll just follow that procedure and just make sure everything's up to spec make sure that your oil cap and your dipstick are back in we're going to start the ski run it for two minutes turn it off wait for two minutes check the oil top up and take out as necessary all right so remember you don't want to turn the water on until the ski's turned on so Then shut the ski off. Now we want to let that sit for another 30 seconds to a minute. And then we're going to check the oil again and make sure that everything's all right. You want to wipe it first, then dip it in and check it. I can't see much oil on that, so we're going to put some more in and repeat the process. Right, so that oil level wasn't quite right the first time, so what we've done is we've actually poured some more oil in and um, ran the ski for another minute, let it sit for a minute, and now the oil's spot on. So as you can see there, halfway up the folded lines, that's perfect. So the next step will be to change the plugs. You've got three plugs, it's a three cylinder motor. You're going to grab it, just be careful if it's hot. So if the o-ring does pop off like this one, you basically just want to pop it back up. It actually goes into the second groove, like that, and just make sure that the o-ring's intact on all of them. All right, so as you can see in there, we've got one, two, three spark plugs. So you want to grab a spark plug tool, take those out. So the next step is to remove the spark plug out of the motor. So you want to get a nice long extension bar on a, on a drive, and you want a 5.8 socket for these type of plugs. You want to pop them down. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. So most sockets actually have a rubber up there which will help you remove the spark plug. It'll actually stay in the socket. Mine's missing, of course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a magnet and I'm just gonna fish them out. One. Oh, wow. Two. We've got our, our brand new plugs here. I've actually, they come with a cap on top. I've removed the cap, put them in, make them nice and tight, and um, pop the coil packs back on. You always want to do it by hand. You don't want to cross thread. just 
nip them up nice and tight. Right, oh, now you just want to pop your coil packs back on. All right, so you make sure they're nice and pressed in. So pretty much that's that's the service. You want to run it one more time, check your oils. You want to make sure it's actually running correctly now that you've put the new plugs in it. Um, the last step would be to just grab a flashlight, just shine around, wriggle anything, any sort of electrical connection. Just make sure everything's nice and snug. All your hose clamps are tight. You want to inspect your impeller. You want to just do as much checking as you can, and then you're safe to be back on the water. So thanks for watching and um that's it Woohoo!